Greetings to you, ladies and gentlemen, from across the globe. We, sorry, hope you are doing great. Today's discussion will be about machine learning for developing countries, such as Ghana, and how we can benefit from it. So before I would like to delve into today's theme, let me introduce myself. As you can see, my name is Richard Nilante Lawson, the co-founder of AI ML Camp, and also I am, an, I am a machine learning researcher with Ghana NLP, also with Masakani, and in addition to it, um, I am the lead um, event organizer for New York's, the Ghana chapter. And I was also a country runner-up at the NASA Space Arts Challenge 2018. So as you can see, below are some of the organizations I'm affiliated with. So here are the topic um, outline for today's session. So over here, we have deep learning methods to predict weather forecast patterns and enhance e-commerce product marketing. We also have advances of nat natural language processing for Ghanaian languages. In addition, we have computer vision application in some industries that is farming, infrastructure, and what have you. So um, to conclude this, we will talk about deep learning methods to fight misinformation and fraud in Ghana with regards to our e-card or our Ghana card and the world at large. Yes, so one may ask, why machine learning? And what are the machine learning types? So as you can see, we have supervised learning, we have the unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, and reinforcement learning. So with the supervised learning, um, there is actually a continuous target variable. So at the end of this all, it boils down to regression and classification, which en enhances the housing. Uh, so an example of the regression is the housing price prediction of let's say real estate. And also for the cl classification, we have the medical imaging that is being used by uh, healthcare practitioners to actually detect certain um, diseases in the human body, such as um, particular cancers. Also with the unsupervised learning, um, we also have clustering and association. And with the clustering it has to do with customer segmentation. So if you have an e-commerce platform and you like to do customer segmentation, to actually know which um, customers actually patronize your product, goods and services more, you can use the clustering, the clustering model to actually get a good result from that. And also we have association, which actually boils down to the market basket analysis. So with this, we are actually analyzing um, the market in actually a whole. And um, right after that, we have the semi-supervised learning. And with semi-supervised learning, we also have the classification, which actually boils down to text classification. So classifying text into its proper context. And we have the clustering, which actually um, boils down to finding um, link on GPS data. So um, we we'll boil down to that as well. And also we have the reinforcement learning. So with the reinforcement learning as well, it also boils down to optimize marketing. So if you are into the marketing um, set, uh, what's it called, business, and you like to let um, your customers know um, the target market you um, have, you can actually use this um, to optimize the target market. And also for the reinforcement learning with regards to control, an example here is driverless cars. So as we all know, Tesla is an automobile company that is pushing the agenda of driverless cars. So yes, this is the types of machine learning. So with this out of the way, um, let's delve into our first case study. So deep learning method. So one may ask, why deep learning method? And what has it got to do with predicting weather forecast pattern? So um, with that, we all know that we have climate change um, in the country or around us that is actually disturbing us. And also uh, with regards to the changes in weather patterns, we have interesting changes in weather patterns, in particular uh, with particular uh, this um, season. So this year in particular, the weather hasn't been favorable for all. So um, as you can see, 
on this slide, um, we have the COP26. So there's a conference on climate change going on in Glasgow, that COP26, which is a top agenda by world leaders. For us, we have identified that the changes in weather patterns in Ghana, the change of the earlier rain from April and the light showers in August has changed. And now the earlier rains have just started and it's affected um, the crop calendar for farmers and others that rely heavily on the weather forecast, such as traders, logistics, the academia, and, and what have you. So as you can see, um, war leaders are actually planning to actually make sure that um, the, their economy is actually uh, met well with regards to um, weather forecast patterns. So we at AIML Camp, in collaboration with Cultimate, have brought up a project called SWIX. So um, SWIX is actually a model um, to handle the weather forecast and pattern changes more dynamically to aid in the reduction of prediction rate of the weather and climate in a whole. An advantage of this is to aid farmers know their crop calendars per the dynamic weather forecast, hence enabling them to know if they should start their crop season earlier than the usual or otherwise. So over here, there's a detailed section we have. So here is a basic model of how the weather forecast pattern would look like, or is actually um, is. So we have the historical weather data. So over here, from the left-hand side, the historical weather data is a, um, is a data set, or there are data sets that are five years of minimum, uh, five years worth in terms of um, the minimum data, um, what's it called? Yes, we want the data, sorry, the data set of the historical weather to be. So with this, we have two flows. So we have the weather research and forecasting model. So this is actually the old way or the current way that our meteorological agencies are using. And we have the proposed machine learning model. So what happens here is the weather prediction that comes from the meteorological uh, model and the one we have proposed and um, will be compared. Then um, per the data sets that are closely um, likely, uh, sorry, that are close. And we actually use that in collaboration with certain uh, current trends to actually give us the more dynamic um, weather forecast we have. So here's an example. So as you can see here, um, on, on the left side is the um, deep learning weather prediction. So um, here are the, the numbers running in hours are actually the amount of time this data was gathered. And also in the middle is the actual um, weather for the 2017, 2018 years. And also at the right hand side, we have the average weather for that particular day. So what is happening here is the data that is being gathered, that has been gathered on the left hand side, is being compared with these other two. And with this, it will be able to predict a more dynamical. Um, weather pattern with regards to um, what will happen, let's say, in the next um, a particular period of time. So let's say two uh, weeks or even a season or with regards to like the day you are in. So with this, we are assuring people that yes, um, weather forecast patterns can actually be met. So here's actually a breakdown of what um, the um, illustration we showed earlier on is. So here we have the current, we have the current numeric weather prediction that is here. So over here, it all boils down to the input, which comes from the meteorological observation. Do you get it? So this is the um, what the meteorological agencies are using. So they use the numeric weather prediction system, whereby the data that comes in from the satellite are uh, selected for observation for data assimilation. That's for the processing stage. Then after assimilation, there's a dynamic core that actually helps in the prediction. Then there is a post-processing that actually delves in more statistical analysis. 
Then after that, there's evaluation. So um, in between is the blend of the two. So like you saw in the previous slide, um, there was the blend of the two whereby the left-hand side, um, which is the data set that we gathered over a period of time, and the data set that are actually running, and the data set of the current day. So with this being combined, um, this is where we have the middle one. That's the hybrid uh, numerical weather pattern alongside the machine learning or the deep learning workflow. So with this as well, um, are the, uh, the pre-processed um, data? So with our simulation, instead of it's using the old method, which is the 3D, 4D, VAR plus ensemble, it uses the deep um, neural network, which actually boils down to either the, um, what, what, what have you here? Um, which actually boils down to the data models that are actually um, yes with the deep so we have the um, what's it called the supervised and the unsupervised and sorry for that break so which actually boils down to the deep uh, neural network, which actually consists of the supervised model. So with the supervised learning, the system is able to um, use the old data sets in addition to um, the current changes to actually learn um, the trends and patterns. So this is what hence becomes the supervised learning. Then after the deep um, neural network or hybrid uh, model is um, has done its prediction right, it will actually boil down to the uh, statistical downscaling, which will then be presented to us as a predictive analysis. Then upon this hybrid is the uh, unsupervised learning. That is what we have here. So basically the data sets that are running at the moment would be um, presented here. Then itself, uh, sorry, then the data set would be learning from its own. So it will be learning from the patterns of the data sets that are already existed and also the data model that is running as the hybrid. So with this set, let's move on to the next slide. So over here, this is basically what is happening. Uh, this is the basic scenario of what is happening in the previous slide. So here we have the set slides and then some of the methodological tools that actually uh, comes out as a prediction for the statistical purposes and also for the uh, what's it called the metrological purposes for us to consume so one may ask um, why 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 um, the need to predict weather forecast so these are some of the advantages to inform the government about the food storage for extended periods of time hence reducing price and uh, food prices so this is with regards to farmers so that farmers can be able to um, uh, do more with regards to production in terms of their farming, whereby if they know a particular season, they are supposed to start their farming. Um, with this, we all would be uh, at ease because we would have enough food, which would hence um, enhance, reduce in food prices. And also for traders, traders can now know how to schedule their produce shipments from various regions to their current destination for resale. And this will also aid in reducing food loss. So if the farmer knows what particular time to start his or her season with regards to a particular crop, the traders as well can also know um, the particular time they can also go for the produce and resale. Yes. So with e-commerce, AIM Welcome has also partnered with um, Gopna Solutions, and we brought up a solution called um, a model actually called Shellmark GH. So Shellmark GH uses the uh, what are we? Shellmark GH uses the recommendation engine uh, model. So the, basically, the recommendation engine model works this way. So if we've all noticed that whenever we go to YouTube or we go to any of the e-commerce platforms and we view a product or we actually 
play a, a song and the song is to our interest so actually like the song youtube will actually recommend more or most of these songs to you so same with um, the e-commerce platform if you view or you bought a particular item or item collection and a similar customer comes um, and a similar customer actually views or buys that particular item the recommendation engine would go in and actually be looking for people who are actually uh, requesting for these similar items and hence um, would be able to help the customers know what particular items to get and also help the sales uh, sorry the company on the other hand also uh, know uh, which particular items to sell more so here's a basic example um, of an, uh, the recommendation engine from um, amazon so over here you can see over here that it says recommended for you based on kindle paper white that you actually bought so um, per what you bought or per what you clicked on, these are some of the recommendations it gives you. And the recommendations are actually the best, even though sometimes uh, it can be um, spamming. Yes. So um, that is for the e-commerce bit. So this also delves into like a broad variety of services. So we have Netflix here. So if you've realized also on Netflix and or any of these platforms that you've seen here, anything you actually click on, any product, any item you actually click on, being it a movie, being it a show or what have you, um, you are actually, the, the likelihood of you being able to, sorry, the likelihood of the algorithm um, to, able, uh, to be able to predict to you or to send you um, a piece that's actually a similar to what you just viewed is very, very high. So if you look here, we, um, it says that 80% of content consumed are actually a uh, true recommendation engine. And also $98 billion um, has been, uh, what's it called, generated as an annual revenue from just recommendation engine. So if you're a business and you take this recommendation engine seriously, you would actually um, see results at the end of it. So over here, we have the Ghanaian language, uh, the Ghanaian languages, which has to do with the natural language processing. So one may ask, why is machine learning to do with natural language processing or the Ghanaian language? So this is a case study to actually let us appreciate why we need natural language processing or um, in general, the machine learning for Ghanaian languages. So over here, we have data sets. So for the case study, uh, with regards to data sets for languages to be translated, um, with regards to the Ghanaian languages, there isn't enough data sets. And also for understanding the context of a sentence. So if, um, let's say, you have, um, uh, what's it called? We have kill. Sorry, let me use this uh, best word. So we have man. So there's, in, in the sentence, we can have, I am a man. And we can have, of he mans the ship. You see, it is man, man, but the contexts are actually different. One is to actually handle, and one is actually um, to do with gender. And also, um, in addition to this, we have solution available for the Ghanaian language. So let's delve in. So here is Google Translate. So with this Google Translate, if you look at it very, very closely, uh, with regards to the languages, you wouldn't see any um, Ghanaian language in there. So this is what informed um, Ghana NLP to actually come up with um, a research paper to handle the natural language processing. So in this research paper, we can see the number of languages um, from um, the most um, spoken to the least spoken. So we have the Akan, uh, which has to do with the tree and the uh, fancy, followed by the Ghanaian Pigeon English, yes people will be surprised that Ghanaian Pidgin English is actually one of the most um, language, uh, the language we speak of our time. Then followed by Ewe, Abron, and so have you. So with this research paper, what we've been able to do is to um, come together to get, um, what's it called, um, information about the languages in Ghana and how we can use natural language processing to actually make it meaningful and more appreciated 
by S. So that one day when um, you go online and you are searching for something with regards to uh, your own per uh, personal preference, which is to do with languages, you would be able to get whatever feedback you would uh, get. So here are some of the contributors of the natural language uh, processing for Ghanaian languages and its institutions. Yes. So here, here's a simple methodology of how the natural language processing works. So there's, there was actually a distribution of se uh, sentences to researchers. So there were actually 10 researchers from Ghana NLP uh, that were nominated for scoring, verification, correction of the preliminary translation. So since the very data, a uh, marked data set, Ghana NLP actually took it upon its um, shoulders to actually do this research. So Ghana NLP aimed to translate 50,000 sentences with 10 researchers and also, um, each, 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 each researcher was given 5,000 languages, eh, sorry, sentences um, to translate, do you understand, or to revise, to enhance the model. So each, um, each researcher was offered $1 for 50 scoring. So let's say for, this is um, below is a score text and the opus uh, machine, machine translation and the correction. So this is um, the human touch after machine translation. So over here, we have a simple text that says, um, I've gotten better. So many AGEA, do you understand? And the correction um, here is Mihu Atomi. So this was what the system actually with its model and the data set that we provided um, generated. And here was the um, corrected form. And in the next one, we have, how did it go last night? So a day na a day chain, and here is Nera Anajon Okusi saying, do you understand? So the correction of the uh, machine learning uh, translation is actually uh, what actually helped us, uh, Ghana NLP, to actually get accurate data on the score test we actually have generated. So in a nutshell, um, there's a product on the market or a service on the market called Kaya Translate, which actually um, translates um, up to, um, I think right now, five languages in, in the local dialect. So we have the uh, Akan. So both Akan languages, which is the P and the Fante, alongside um, English, Ga, and I think we have Yoruba on there as well. Yes. So this is the interface for the um, mobile app. So you click on the translate. Um, so let's say you want to translate from P to English. So you click on the, uh, what's it called? The mode you want to translate from. Then you type in your text. After typing in your text, you select the language you want it to be in, then you translate. So GD, na Obeya Amao. So when you translate it, it will come to you with faith. Do you understand? So this is for the uh, mobile app and it's available on uh, Google Play and Apple Store. So you just type in Kaya uh, Translate and you actually get it, yes. So with the um, web app, we have translate.ghana.nlp.org. So what I did before this event was to um, generate a text from English to a tree. So what I just typed was, Nilante is living in Accra and it translated it to tree, Nilante te Accra. Do you understand? So let me let me help you out here. Okay, so over here, what is happening behind the scenes is that um, it uses um, models that are actually called BET. So um, yeah, so with a BET, um, it's actually a model that actually um, uses context and also um, what's it called the natural uh, language processing um, element to actually translate uh, whatever um, words you have into context. So we are not just translating the words, but you're translating the words with context. Because if it was up to words, I think we have all the words translated. Yes. So with that out of the way, still on natural language processing, we have the um, casual language modeling. So when we ask, what's the casual language modeling? So this consists of transformer to learn 
um, text uh, representation by providing a set of previous features, giving the previous heading state to the current batch. The model predicts the next word. This is where it gets interesting. So at this juncture, um, we can see that there is actually um, a model called the GPT. So the GPT basically stands for the Generative Pre-trained Transformer. And with this, what happens is it takes um, this model actually takes a phrase or a sentence, a short, a, a long phrase, what have you, and whatever. Um, instruction you give it, it actually plays that rule perfectly. So over here, um, we are using the uh, Eleuther AI 6B. So if you have um, a browser, you can actually put this in your URL and test it out. So before joining, I actually type in here, um, Nilante is speaking at um, ADSC 2021 on the theme machine learning for developing countries. And what happened here was, um, with just these few texts, the system was actually able to generate a full paragraph. Do you understand? It was able to generate a full paragraph. So like I said, the generative, the GPT uses a model that actually um, learns from its um, data sets in its model. Do you understand? And carries the data um, alongside certain predictive words to actually give you um, a more accurate or a more um, how do I put it? A more meaningful sentence or paragraph. So the result here is actually saying uh, Nilante is speaking at the ADS, uh, blah, 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 blah. And Nilante is an AI researcher. So from this, Nilante is an AI researcher to the accent themselves was actually generated from the model. So I didn't actually do anything aside that. So um, this is actually. Um, one of the tools that is actually transforming the world of AI at the moment with regards to the NLP. So over here, we have the GitHub Copilot that actually uses the casual uh, language modeling bit. So over here is um, the, so what the GitHub Copilot is doing is building a tic-tac-toe game. So you just type in your comment and uh, the comment can have, let's say, build um, a tic-tac-toe game, do you understand? Then the system would actually use data sets in its um, cloud or in its uh, jurisdiction to actually generate codes that are actually in line with whatever you want. And funny enough, this has worked very, very well. And as you can see, it's actually generating codes uh, perfectly. So um, with this out of the way, this is how GitHub uh, co-pilot works. So it uses the OpenAI uh, codex model in collaboration with public code and text on the internet. So it actually um, crawls the internet um, for data related to um, the text you typed in the comment. Then what it does is it actually um, provides you suggestion based on the comment you give it. So like um, with regards to here, when you type the tech tag, to a game. So building a tic-tac-toe game, we took in the request and went to the Google, uh, sorry, the GitHub Copilot and actually provided us with suggestions. So the suggestion that came, if you think the suggestions are not good, you can actually improve the suggestion and it will improve the Copilot model. Do you understand? And it will enhance the experience. So these are basically for, um, or mainly for developers. So if you're a developer, and you've seen this, um, kindly know that this is the next big thing to actually help us um, work faster and efficient. So before I continue to the CMM, people, people would actually um, say that, yes, GitHub Copilot is coming to take our jobs as developers. No, GitHub Copilot wouldn't take anyone's jobs, but uh, it actually enhance the experience of the workflow. So I would actually talk about um, certain um, questions to actually look out for when designing a model. So over here, we have the um, CMM, which actually is across uh, modal models. So this actually refers to the uh, syn um, synergistic uh, synthesis of information from multiple sensory modalities, such that the learning that occurs 
within an individual sensory modality can be enhanced with from one or more other modalities. So enough with the talk, let's actually go into it. So with this, we have, this actually can be broken down into two case studies, which actually one can be the detection of fake news and the other can be for digital marketing. So with the fake news, um, in 2009, August 28, there was a fake news that talked about um, what's next for uh, Britons after Brexit. So if you realize, over here, what the model did was to break down um, the human or machine generated text and images into um, article, photo, and caption. And it actually looked for certain trends that actually do not match um, the public data that is online with regards to that particular trend. Okay, so let me slow down. So um, what happened here is, uh, for let's say the Prime Minister Theresa uh, May's team for the United Kingdom um, is actually a fishy, uh, what's it called, um, phrase. And also over here, where the parliament was scheduled, is actually a, a fishy, uh, what's it called, phrase. So there are certain things the machine can actually know from the data set it has. Do you understand? And it can, with this, help break down and also help in detecting fake news. And this fake news thing was, uh, was it called in the in the news more um, with regards to the 2019 um, era due to the Brexit issue that actually was occurring. So um, after this, let's take another um, what's it called slide. So in this slide, we have the breakdown of um, this uh, model. So over here. We have um, the input, which actually comes in as the news content, image, uh, and text, which will actually go to the image to sentence and breakdown model. Then after it will move to the uh, what's it called the multi model and uh, feature extraction. That would actually um, split out um, the text from the image and also um, particular phrases from each other. But after it will cross the model's um, similarity capture with already existing data or with already uh, trained um, data for that particular model. Then after that, to be able to tell if the news that is being uh, rumored is actually fake or a real news, or an actual news to be precise. So um, with that out of the way, we are moving to computer vision. So let me ask, computer vision, computer vision, why computer vision? So computer vision, um, is here to help us actually do things more effectively with our vision. So an example here is with Tesla. So Tesla's self-driving car, you understand? So with this, um, there's a sensor um, on the car, uh, sorry, there are sensors on the cars that actually um, helps the car uh, move ease, uh, with ease across um, the city or across a particular area without any um, fault. So over here is just a breakdown of what I'm just talking about. So we have the real-time object detection um, via a coverage. So here is the coverage. So you can see that we are, the model is able to identify a person, a horse, and other objects. And also over here, we have the image file. So this image file can actually uh, be um, attached or um, this, this image file when uploaded to the model would be able to detect an images based on the data sets that are actually there to predict um, whether this person is actually um, a good person or a bad person or anything regarding to that particular data model. So the computer machine, we have um, with regards to infrastructure. So the infrastructure here is a company um, that is using the you only live once uh, model um, whereby it is being able to identify portals on the roads of Ghana. So this can actually help um, identify the issues like this and address it to uh, national bodies so that certain actions or measures can be taken. And also in the health um, sector, um, with cameras around now in Ghana or in Accra to be precise, um, we can actually 
um, use these models to actually detect whether people are actually taking the protocol um, seriously. That's the COVID protocols seriously. So we don't need to actually go anywhere. So with just the aid of the um, cameras that are installed in town, um, if the computer vision model is actually attached to it with the right uh, model, we can be able to actually know people who are actually wearing the face marks or not, so that we can know whether it's whether the disease is still um, harm to us or whether the disease can be controlled. So, like I was saying, um, we have what we call the transfer learning. So, transfer learning is basically or is technically um, taking data sets um, from um, previous um, stores with the same model and transferring it to another data set or store so that there can be easy coercion with regards to the model that is actually in play. So over here, we have the lung cancer data set. So previous data um, with regards to a year span has been dumped into the model. And with this, it says using the supervised learning to actually train itself. Then as time goes on, I, um, the unsupervised learning will be added to actually let the system actually predict on its own whether um, there is a lung cancer in a particular patient or not. So machine learning. So there are vast importance of machine learning across Africa. So um, if this is actually accepted in Africa, um, there will be a mass education on it, and this would facilitate, um, sorry, um, there'll be a mass um, education on it, which would help um, people in the industry or outside know how to use the models and the um, systems in place to actually help enhance their businesses. And also, since jobs will be created, um, it will aid in um, poverty um, alleviation or reduction. And aside that, uh, we have life saving. So with the life saving, uh, it actually has to do with the health um, sector of um, the whole industry. And also, in addition to that, we have the AI digitization enabler, um, which will actually help increase the possibilities of AI use the cases in Africa, hence enhancing digitalization of the African economy. So with all this said, um, hopefully if this is um, embraced, um, hopefully if this is embraced, what will happen is uh, we will meet the SDG goals by UN, and this will actually help us as an economy at large. So one may ask, what are the limitations of um, AI ML in Africa uh, to be precise? So like I was saying earlier on, we have lack of data um, to be trained, and also there, are, there is insufficient fund, uh, funding. So um, people are actually doing stuff or organizations are doing stuff from their pockets, and that is hard, hard earned money. And aside that, um, there isn't no technical use case to actually um, use the models that have been generated for. Yeah, so like I was saying about the caution, um, one thing we need to note is um, since we are using data models um, from the internet and just um, tweaking it here and there to actually build a model that will be relevant for your project. Here are certain things to know. You have to know that this model you're actually getting from online um, to actually help you um, tweak um, your project. Um, that, sorry, tweak your project is actually um, a data model from someone. And you don't know the data set that the person trained the data model on. So let's say with um, an identification um, model that actually identifies whether people are criminals or not. And over the years, the data set that we used to test um, these data models are actually blacks. So quote unquote, um, there's a racial um, thing to do here because um, we have most of the blacks going to prison. And because of this, the data set on the um, data, sorry, the data set on actually getting prisoners uh, are more blacks or are usually blacks. So we should actually take note of whatever data model we are actually getting online. And also we should know how to use the data models. If you don't know how to use the data models, you can contact 
any of the organizations you would like to join or do research more on how to use data models to actually benefit you and your uh, ecosystem at large. So I may ask what are the prerequisites of using machine learning or artificial intelligence um, tools. So I would for one see that it would be good to start with a little bit of mathematics. So you have to have a mathematical background. Also, you have to know a little bit of Python or R in addition to data structures. So you'll be able to um, know how to organize your algorithms um, to train the data models effectively and efficiently. Same to do with the TensorFlow. So the TensorFlow and the Python actually goes hand in hand and actually um, aiding in the predictive analysis. So um, whilst, whilst you are drawing the curtains um, down, um, here are some of the communities. Um, it will be best if you would like to join in this ecosystem. So we have Ghana NLP, and that actually focuses mainly on natural language processing. And here are their social media handles. So you can actually write this down or input it inside your um, browser to actually get uh, connected. And I hope you will learn more from them. Also, here is AI ML comes um, flow. So to join the AI ML Camp community, we can use this website URL. Also, you can join the Discord community that is actually growing and um, actually uh, enabling developers and also people who want to learn AI ML um, to the next level. And also we have the waiting list, the application waiting list, which will actually help you enroll in our web application program um, that has to do mainly with um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So uh, with that out of the way, here are some academic uh, paper contributions that I, in collaboration, or AI come in collaboration with um, natural language processing, um, have done. So we have the natural language for Ghanaian languages. That is to actually segment and actually know um, the Ghanaian languages to actually work on, so that um, in the next five years to come, we can actually be recognized on the map when it comes to um, translation and also um, use, it, uh, use cases with the Ghanaian language. So here is actually uh, to do with the context text embedding. So like I give an example with the man verb. So and the man, uh, what's it called, um, pronoun. So like I am a man and also um, I man the ship. So with this context, uh, text embeddings, uh, we actually have done this for the tree model. And with this, what happens is it actually breaks down whatever needs to be broken down in terms of the algorithm process of the data model to be able to assimilate whatever context the text are in so that we can get the results we want to get at the end of the day when we translate the data we have to virtually input it in the um, section. And also we have the English pre-parallel corpus for machine learning. So that is um, actually what is behind the scenes in collaboration with the other research papers to actually make the Kaya app and the translate on the Google uh, sorry, on the Ghana NLP translation portal effective. So thank you very much. And yes.